Welcome back. This is section 6.3 on conditions for parallelograms. One of the things we're going to talk about today is how we can use parallelograms and their features to kind of talk about the different qualities and to prove if something is a parallel. This is going to be um, a couple of theorems and then a couple of problems and we'll be uh, well on our way to understanding parallelograms. Up here at the top, bird watching can involve um, many different apparatus and if you'll see here these are binoculars and this is called a parallelogram mount. And what it allows the viewer to do is to move up and down and not change the viewing angle. Okay, So you can see here that we've got this parallelogram outlined inside. Okay, And so those are going to maintain their parallelogram nature as they move up and down. What it might look like is this. When it's at the top, if you move the parallelogram down, so the binoculars would be on the edge here and it's going to move up and down um, to allow the viewer to maintain that viewing angle. Okay, Let's talk about a couple of theorems. Theorem 6.3.1. These are good things to put in your note cards um, if you have a set of those going so you can reference them at all times. If one pair of opposite sides of a parallel of a quadrilateral are parallel and, a, and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Here's how we would mark that to show that this is true. We might say this. We might say that BC and AD are congruent and parallel. If I go back to my quadrilateral here that I've made, notice it can be a rectangle or some sort of parallelogram. But what I'm going to particularly focus on is these two yellow sides over here. Okay, The two yellow sides are the same length. Okay, They're the same length. And they're parallel. And so regardless of how I move them, when I connect them with those two black strips, you notice how it maintains its parallel nature. And if you're watching the black strips, you can sort of see that they are continuing to be parallel. They're kind of moving from side to side. So when I move one to the side, the other one kind of moves over this way. They move parallel to one another. Okay, And so that's going to maintain this parallel nature. All right. So that's one thing we can do. If both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this is saying we've got opposite sides that are congruent. Well, if we think about a rectangle, okay, the two yellow sides are the same. The two black sides are also the same. And so no matter if I move it like this, it makes sense that the black ones are going to stay the same distance apart. So they would be the same distance because the two yellow sides are the same distance. And so if I move them this way, these sides are still the same length. These sides are still the same length. They're just moving side to side. Okay, So this is kind of a visual to give you an idea of what these theorems are about. 6.3. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. These theorems are all related to the ones we, saw, we looked at in the last section. Okay, So if we once again look at our parallelogram, notice. I've got kind of a biggish angle down here, right? An obtuse angle. And if these two black lines here are parallel, this would be a transversal. Okay? And if they're parallel over here and this transversal is also parallel, I know that these two angles are going to be the same. Notice how they move. If they're really small on this side, so these two angles that I have my fingers by, if they're really small, if I move them over this way, they get really big. They move together. They move together. They're always going to be the same, opposite angles. Say The other two angles are also opposite. They stay the same. That's just how they move. It's how they move, OK? So 6-4, if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. This is what this looks like. So I would have, this one is, 180 minus x, and this one's going to be x. This one's also going to be 180 minus x, because we are remembering now that if I've got an angle down here in the corner, okay, it is going to go with the two angles that are next to it. So if I take my, my finger here, this angle up here and this angle right here are going to be supplementary. Okay, They're going to add up to 180. All right. And if it's also supplementary with this one, well, that makes sense because these two angles 
opposite of one another are the same. So if this angle down here is, say, 100 degrees, then, and both of these are 80, then this angle is going to be supplementary with both of them. Okay? That's what that means. Last theorem. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect one another, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So what we're saying is we don't know if it's a quadrilateral. Or, sorry, we don't know if it's a parallelogram. But if this is true, if bisecting, then parallelogram. Okay, that's what that's saying. In example one, we're going to explore these properties. Now, don't, don't feel ashamed to go back in your cards and look at these because this, this is what it's all about. It's all about using your resources to go back and find out what it is that we're supposed to know. Okay, so we want to show that ABCD is a parallelogram for x equals 7 and y equals 4. What we're given is this. One side is x plus 14, this one's 3x, and we've got 5y minus 4 and 2y plus 8. We want to show that it's a parallelogram. And to show that it's a parallelogram, we must show, let's fill in the blank. What do we need to show in order to prove that these two things are, you know, that this is a parallelogram? Well, if we look up at our theorems, notice what happens, okay? If both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. Well, I just happen to have two pairs of opposite sides. So I need to show that 5y minus 4 is equal to 2y plus 8. And I need to show that x plus 14 is equal to 3x. Here we go. Well, I'm going to substitute, and I'll use red to do that. If y is 4, I've got 5 times 4 minus 4. And I'm questioning, is that equal to 2 times 4? plus 8. Well, this is 8 plus 8. This is 16. Still questioning whether it's true. And this is 20 minus 4, which is 16. So does 16 equal 16? Indeed it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this side is congruent to this side. Let's test the other. This would be 7 plus 14. And we want to see if it's equal to 3 times 7. Well, you've probably already figured it out. 21 is equal to 21. Okay? And so these two sides are also congruent. So because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, it is a parallelogram. Okay, next example. Show that EFGH is a parallelogram for Z equals 11 and W equals 4.5. So, let's figure out what we're going to do in this one. I'm going to use a green color. And we need to figure this out. We're talking about angles. And so when I go back to my theorems, which ones talk about angles? It's just this one. Okay? And what does it say? It says, if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both of its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, if we're talking about angles, we need to figure out what we need to know. So, to show that EFGH is a parallelogram, we must show And we're going to fill in the blank. We must show that angle F plus angle G is equal to 180. Right? Because these two need to be supplementary. We also need to show that angle G plus angle H is supplementary or equal to 180. So the two consecutive angles, this is the one that is shared between the both of them. So G and H must be supplementary and these two must be supplementary as well. So let's fill in the blanks. 9z plus 19 plus 
14w minus 1 is equal to 180. That's what we're trying to figure out. And is 14w minus 1 plus 11z minus 3 equal to 180. We're going to test both of these. Let's use blue. So 9 times z would be 9 times 11 plus 19 plus 14 times 4.5 minus 1. Is that equal to 180? Well, let's look. This is 99 plus 19 plus, now let's think about this for a second. Four and a half is half of nine. So two times 4.5 would be nine. So this is really seven times nine, which is 63, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say minus one equal to 180. So 99 plus 19 would be 118 plus 62 equal to 180. Yes, that is true. Okay, so this is true. That's true. So let's test this one. This is 14 times 4.5 minus 1 plus 11z minus 3. Well, what's 11z minus 3? Z is 11, so that's going to be 11 times 11 minus 3 equal to 180. I'm getting close to the edge there. Once again, this is 63 minus 1 plus 11 times 11 is 121 minus 3 equal to 180. Remember, we're testing this. We want to know if this is true. It might not be true. The first condition is true. The two, these two angles were supplementary. We're testing to see if these are. So I've got 62 plus 118 equal to 180. And that's a big yes sir Bob. Okay? So yes, it is. Okay, it is because consecutive angles were supplementary. Let's sum it up. Conditions for parallelograms. These are beautiful because we only have to show that one of them is true. One of these sets of conditions is true to prove it's a parallelogram. The first thing, we could prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if I prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's the definition. And that would make it a parallelogram. That's a condition for a parallelogram. Number two, I could show that one pair of opposite sides are parallel and also congruent and that would be theorem 6-3-1 so these are conditions that show that a parallelogram is true or that it is a parallelogram. Condition number three. And remember, I only need to show one of these to prove that it's true. So if I have one or two, it's good. Number three. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. And that's theorem 6-3-2. Okay? The fourth condition that could be met could be that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Going shorthand on that one for you. So that one could be true. So if I've got a, a shape and both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So the two in my fingers are congruent, and now these two are also congruent. I could say that it was a parallelogram without proving anything else. That's the beauty of these. If I prove one of these, everything else about a parallelogram is true, 
and yet I only had to prove one piece of information. It's crazy, okay? Number five, this one has two parts. I could prove one angle is supplementary to, e to both consecutive angles, okay? That's 6-3-4, or, sorry, got six in there for you. Number six, the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, and that's six dash three dash five theorem that is. You need to prove only one of these conditions to prove that a shape is a parallelogram. Shortcut, guys. It's a shortcut. You prove one of these things, but you got to know them. Got to write them down in your cards. Got to commit them to memory. If you can prove one of them, you can prove that it's a condition for a parallelogram. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.